the next YouTuber who was sentenced to 15 months in prison for playing a prank on a homeless person. Were people that desperate for views that you gotta prank a homeless person? <laughs> Yo. What's good YouTube? Today we're gonna be looking at YouTubers who have spent time in jail or prison. You're making content. What do you mean you're going to jail? For what? We're gonna see what this video is about. If you're watching from YouTube, make sure you guys join us on Twitch we're live every day. Links in the description. Without further ado, let's get started. These are 10 YouTubers who have spent time behind bars, and we're gonna list them from three hours in jail to 50 years in prison, beginning with Sam Pepper and Ice Poseidon, who got arrested together for the dumbest No, no, hold on, hold on. we're not gonna let that slide. 50 years in prison? Oh yeah, no, he's a murderer. If anything, he probably caught it on camera of him murdering someone because how the hell you get 50 years? Reason imaginable. Back in mid-2018, Sam and Ice had the genius idea of hiding in a purple wooden Fortnite llama on wheels so they could sneak past security into VidCon where they'd stay and film a 24-hour overnight challenge. Everything seemed to be going well in the beginning as Sam and Ice cruised into the convention whilst filming and laughing at security through a little peephole. However, the two seemed to forget that they were live streaming to thousands of people and it would only take one call to VidCon to have their whole plan shut down. This call would happen less than 10 minutes after getting inside, which was followed by security and police walking straight up to them. Imagine preparing that whole plot, getting a whole Fortnite toy whatever customized and not being smart enough to realize, yo bro, there's a lot of people watching us. All it takes is one person to report us. Dumbass niggas, 10 minutes and now you're ass doing time. That's crazy. Them before they'd be arrested. <laughs> Step out. Yeah. Come on, fellas. Uh, what is all this? The two were taken back to the police station, banned from VidCon for life, and given a notice to appear in court, which eventually resulted in a further two years probation, $100 in fines, and 80 hours of community service. Sam Pepper and Ice Poseidon's arrest was short-sighted and idiotic. However, it still wasn't as stupid as the time Logan Paul was sent to jail for- Logan got arrested? Wait, wait, was it was it for the thing he did in Japan? No, it wasn't for that, right? I didn't know his ass got arrested. You thug. For a whole day after getting arrested in Italy. No, what he should have got arrested for was first and foremost that lineup, because they I don't know if y'all seen the actual lineup. And he also should have got arrested for that lame ass apology. I still ain't forget that shit. Oh, what what he say? I, I I apologize for my severe and continuous lapse in my judgment. That AI generated ass apology. It happened back in 2017 when Logan was in his obnoxious vlogger phase, and prior to the arrest, Logan's group had disrespected Italian norms, gotten kicked out of hotels, and had filmed locals without their permission. So by the time the group made it to Italy's famous Colosseum, they were bound to get into trouble. Logan began by stating that he knew flying a drone over the Colosseum was illegal. I understand uh, drone shots here are illegal, so let's definitely do that. However and you proceed to do it. No, one thing I will say though, Old Logan compared to new Logan, it changed a lot. Logan right now, he does still make mistakes, but he's much more bearable to watch compared to back then. Don't get me wrong, he still be slipping, but I don't know how people watch old Logan Paul. I understand uh, drone shots here are illegal, so let's definitely do that. However, after putting the drone in the air anyway, the military were able to capture it. I found it, ellipsis, military has it. And Logan was arrested shortly thereafter. Fly of a drone yeah. in this uh, area is illegal. No bueno. I must uh, arrest you for this. Okay. After being released from jail later that afternoon, Logan was straight back to his idiotic self. Yo, Freedom! I'm a savage, bro. Free my boy, Logan. Ah! You can't stop, Logan. Ah! And if anything seems... This is what happens when you listen to too much rap music. You finally think you're able to relate with, you know, buddy, you're not Lil Durk. You're not King Von. You straight, bruh. You're not gonna get your booty tickled. I'm proud of what had happened. I went to jail, bro. I went, I've been in jail, bro. While Logan did have to spend a full day behind bars, his punishment wasn't nearly as bad as Sniper Wolf's, who after being charged with armed robbery, had to spend multiple nights in jail. It happened back in 2013 before Sniper Wolf became a big YouTuber, and the incident was explained in a video appropriately titled My Jail Story. She explained that while shopping at a department store, she was asked by security to check her bag, yet since Sniper Wolf didn't want this to happen, she pushed the security guard and ran back to her car. He stopped me, asked for my bag, and pulled it from me. I didn't know what to do. I just ran away and got in my car. Sniper Wolf seemed confident that she didn't actually have anything in her bag. I didn't even steal anything and they had no proof I did. Yet under the assumption that she was running because she'd stolen something, Sniper Wolf was arrested later that day. They took me to the police station jail. They took mug shots and- Let's be honest, she's lying. Ain't no way officers or, or the court is gonna charge you with armed robbery if it's, if all you did was run away with your belongings. You look good. I'll be honest, not 
hit any day of the week, all right? I'll be honest, I know that was some random information that nobody asked for, but you're lying. Your looks are not deceiving enough for me to see through them lies, all right, Sniper Wolf? Asked us a ton of questions. She was then charged with armed robbery. I was charged with armed robbery. How? They said it wasn't official charges. They could just pretty much charge us whatever they want right now. Before she'd be sent to a larger jail complex. Out of everything we could have charged her for. Thievery, I don't know. Not being cooperated with police. Yeah, let's charge her for goddamn armed robbery. You're lying. You're lying. He's a fucking thug. <laughs> where she remained for three days before being released. I was in jail for almost three days. Yet this wouldn't be the last time that Snipe Wolf ended up behind bars. Because three years later, Snipe Wolf would take to Twitter to make a new post reading, so neighbors called the cops cause they heard screaming and I got arrested for disorderly conduct, lol at my mugshot though. This post was followed by a video simply titled Arrested in which Snipe Wolf explained that she'd been taken to jail for the night after getting into a petty fight with her boyfriend. So of course I was screaming, I was screaming. I got arrested for disorderly conduct. So apparently you're not allowed to scream in your own house. <laughs> and while it definitely feels like Snipe Wolf isn't telling the full story about both of her jail terms, there's definitely no missing details for the next YouTuber who was sentenced to 15 months in prison for playing a prank on a homeless person. Back in 2017, here I was thinking pranking homeless people was a new thing. You're telling me that Ben the Meta? Were people that desperate for views that you gotta prank a homeless person? And a Spanish creator with over a million subscribers called Reset thought it would be a good idea to take the filling out of an Oreo, replace it with toothpaste and give it to a homeless person. Despite stating that the toothpaste filled Oreo would help the homeless man clean his teeth, the community began to destroy Reset, creating a hundred- Oh, you're a weirdo. Large amount of toothpaste. Yo, you could get sick from that. He just looks like the type of person I would hate. I'm pretty sure they'd probably ban his channel, but nah, he definitely does deserve to get arrested for that. 125,000 signature petition to have his channel deleted, which accompanied a 19 million view video by Auron Play titled Reset the most stupid on internet. However, Reset's worst punishment was still yet to come, as after the homeless man's daughter noticed the backlash on the internet, she'd take legal action against the YouTuber and Reset ended up in court. The judge, Rosa Aragones, noted that it was not an isolated event and the social media star had a propensity for cruel behavior and preying on easily or vulnerable victims. I was gonna say, do your daughter, but dude, at the end of the day, your dad is still homeless. They can help your dad. I mean, don't get me wrong, I don't understand people's relationship, but you mess with the wrong homeless person because shit. That's a doughy daughter though, the fact that you report that shit because a lot of people probably would have just like let that slide. She found him guilty of violating the man's moral integrity. Reset was sentenced to 15 months in prison and was ordered to pay 20,000 euros to the homeless man. Damn. Reset also received a five year ban from all social media with this sentence commencing in June 2019, meaning he'll be able to return to YouTube in June 2024 although certainly with a downtrodden reputation. Beamscore was another- Wait, wait commencing in June 2019, meaning he'll be able to return to YouTube in June 2024, although certainly with a downtrodden reputation. Wait, YouTube didn't ban his account? Is that not enough to get banned? I'm gonna let y'all know. Toothpaste, homeless person. No, 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 I would never do such a thing. If anything, I would give him Oreos and toothpaste, but not, not together, not together. Relax, okay? Beamscore was another million plus subscriber channel who managed to land themselves in prison, although for an even longer time than Reset. The two owners of the family channel, Billy and Eva were often seen on social media with luxury cars and extravagant homes, yet it turns out that not all of their money had been made through their YouTube channel. Because on the 23rd of February 2020, they'd upload a video titled We Kept This A Secret Long Enough We Were Arrested, in which they'd explain that they had a court date for an unspecified charge. Yes, we were arrested and we have a very important date. We have a sentencing date. That will change our lives forever for the good or for the bad. A month later, it was revealed that the couple were being accused of identity theft and defrauding the government, having accessed or attempted to access social security accounts belonging to over 1400 different individuals without the victim's knowledge or authorization. Stealing identities to, you know, to make money. That was my hustle back then. And I knew what I was doing was wrong, but it was just, I needed a way to make money. The couple explained that all of this had happened five years prior to beginning YouTube, although this didn't seem to matter to the judge who sentenced the couple to three years in prison. I got two years and Ivani got one year. I got a year and a day. She has a year and a day. As well as order. What the hell? Why? Lock those thugs up. Wait, wait, no, no. That's how you know female privilege exists. Because what do you mean? You get only one year. For them to pay back the $94,000 that they had stolen. In true family channel fashion, they then used their time in prison as clickbait for content. Yet this behavior wasn't nearly as bad as Russian YouTuber Ruslan Sokol. Your ass about to go to jail and you still making content? No, actually that might be fire. <laughs> 
20 a day in prison. And I'm not gonna lie, my inmate is looking a little thick today. A prison vlogger would actually be funny content in my eyes. Golovsky, who was sentenced to three and a half years in prison for playing Pokemon Go in a church. In early August 2016, Sokolovsky filmed a video of himself catching Pokemon in Yekaterinburg's church on blood. The video stirred up a controversy among believers while a criminal case was initiated in accordance with the Russian Criminal Code's articles, citing incitement to hatred and enmity, denigrating human dignity, as well as violating the right to freedom of conscience and religion. The alleged crime, playing Pokemon Go inside an Orthodox church. Sokolovsky shared a YouTube video that showed him playing the smartphone game. His video went viral and prompted a police investigation. Officials said- Then he was like, relax, relax, I'm seeing a Charizard next <laughs> I know y'all are mad at me right now, but can y'all please show? There's a Charizard right here. That's so disrespectful. The video was one of many by the young blogger that questioned or criticized the church. In May 2017, approximately one year after posting the Pokemon Go video, Rosalind was handed a 3.5 year suspended prison term. And while his 500,000 subscriber YouTube channel is pretty much dead these days, he- Wait, 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 wait. Genuinely speaking, do y'all think that's overkill? Don't get me wrong. I am a firm believer. Respect all religions. I am deeply on that, right? Like respect all religions and do not play around with people's beliefs. 3.5 years? Is that overkill? But that probably won't even bat an eye, but 3.5 years of your life because you you played Pokemon? I don't know, I don't know. Let me know what y'all think. It should be more. He's still yet to spend any time behind bars. Jens the Beast had a harsher sentence than anyone else on this list so far. I'm glad he did. L look at his face. He deserves it. No, no, forget any crime he did. He should go to jail simply for that build. Far. Although he was actually able to use YouTube to improve his reputation after getting out of prison. Jens the Beast explained that his life began to spiral out of control following the death of his mother at the age of 24. He was sent to prison for the first time back in 2000. Hold on, 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 Credit card. Cha-ching! He got three credit card swipes in the back of his neck. I'm gonna take debit, credit, and ABT, face-ass nigga. And after getting into an altercation with the nightclub bouncer, yet after finishing this first prison stint, he was sent back two more times, totaling- Actually, let me relax. This man looked like he could do some damage on me. Pause. You know what I mean. All right, I don't mean sexually. Stop. And sexually too. It's late, I'm sorry. Four years spent behind bars. During his final stint, Jens made the decision to get his life together. The last prison sentence that I got, I used a lot of my time finding myself with cognitive therapy and anger management, stuff like that. <gasps> so I cleared up my mind, decided that I'm not going back. And after being released from prison, he launched his own coaching program before joining Rich Piano's 5% Nutrition Group. And with the assistance of YouTube and Instagram, Jens was able to turn his life around completely. Less than three years ago, I was released from prison. And now I got two companies going working with clients all over the world and doing expos and got so many fans and followers. If he's networking and, and getting his life done and his ass look like a lizard, there is no reason why your ass can't do the same shit, all right? So get up off your ass and start doing shit. I'm really, really grateful. However, while Jens is certainly one of the scariest looking people on the platform, his four years in prison still seems minor when compared to Saucy and Honey, who are facing a seven year sentence for a YouTube prank. This may have been fun for those YouTubers, but tonight they are facing some serious felony charges and up to seven years in jail. In February 2022, the 25,000 subscriber channel posted a video titled 24 hour overnight challenge in Target. We are about to spend the night in Target. We're gonna spend overnight in Target. After introducing the video, the two would hide in the store and wait for it to close. They then walk around filming themselves before walking out in the morning, stating that they had been there all night. We successfully completed our overnight challenge in Target. The video went up like any other. However, the couple was arrested after the video was watched by police. West Whiteland police saw the video and arrested Johnson LaRose and Charlotte Fisher for criminal trespassing and conspiracy. Criminal trespass was a felony in the third degree. They're not they're not entitled to be there, um, so th which makes it a crime. Not only did the news expose their challenge as fake, using security camera footage which showed them leaving the store at 3 a.m., but after being arrested, the two were charged with criminal trespassing, conspiracy, and are now facing up to seven years in prison. Yo, that gotta be a double whammy because at the very least it could have been like, oh, at least at least we know they some real pranksters. Yo ass going to jail and you was caught faking pranks? Oh yeah, you're chopped, you're done, buddy. But I will say seven years, bro. Come on, bro, seven years. 
and you got them on camera, like, that's overkill, bro. Like, relax, bro. However, seven years is still nothing when compared to Wes Watson, whose 10 years in prison acted as a basis for him to become a multi-multi-millionaire. Now, Wes was already a millionaire prior to entering prison. However, this money had been earned via illegal activity and would therefore also become the reason for his time behind bars. After 10 years in the California prison system, Wes decided that he was ready to get his life together, and instead of taking on a normal post-prison job, he instead created a YouTube channel titled GP Penitentiary Life Wes Watson, where he began to tell stories about what prison was really like. His ideal prison-like image helped all of his videos to explode in popularity. So I went on that YouTube channel and it blew up. Every video got millions of views. I got 100,000 subscribers in 28 days. And with his physique also being Damn. in a very enviable position from his time away, Wes sold fitness programs and coaching via his social media channels. Wes also put out a book and only three years after being released from prison, Wes had once again become a multi-millionaire. That's why I've been able to make myself a millionaire and stay fit this quick. Three years! Yo, bro, forget going out of prison for being a millionaire, bro. What you need to start practicing is how to start talking without spitting. Because, goddamn, every time you say some shit, I'm seeing, like, five flakes of little loogies just coming out of your mouth. Years after doing 10 years in prison, everybody told me, Wes, get a real job. Like, how are you going to support a family online coaching? Ha! Which accompanied a... Yeah, I can see why it's online coaching and not in person. A whole new series of videos in which Wes preaches the importance of good habits in the most brutally honest way possible. You will have zero value in your life. Zero worth if you don't put the work in. If you crack that bottle and think it's going to do it, massive downside. Hey, look at me. I'm having so much fun. We know how you look in the morning throwing up in the toilet, looking at your bank account all. However, what? Look, you can have all the money in the world, gang. Your lineup is chopped as hell. Bro, thank you, Andrew Tate. Prison led Wes Watson to become a successful motivational speaker. For the final YouTuber on our list, the opposite happened, and being a motivational speaker led him into prison. He was a Mexican YouTuber by the name of Jermaine Loera MS. Wait, you said motivational speaking led him to prison? The hell was this nigga motivating? Was he telling niggas to do crimes? X. And as mentioned previously, he was known for posting motivational and business content to his channel with over 5,000 subscribers subscribers. However, instead of engaging in legitimate business practice, Jaman instead decided to make money by kidnapping someone and holding them for a $100,000 ransom. Two days after doing so, he was caught by police and was sentenced to 50 years in prison where he remains to this day. Damn, that's tough, man. I'm telling y'all, bro, if you guys didn't have like a moral compass, right? Let's say you ain't believing good or bad, right? Isn't jail enough of a deterrent for y'all to be like, hell no, I'm not doing that crime. To me, jail is enough of a deterrent for me to be like, fuck no, regardless if I believe in good or bad. Bro, if I'm getting jail time behind this shit, I'm not going to do it. Simple. But anyways, YouTube, that doesn't include that video. Make sure you guys subscribe, join us on Discord, catch us on Twitch, all that good stuff. Boxer for life. Love y'all. Peace.